Hello, welcome back to setting up a journal in OJS 3.3. In this module, I will take you on a brief tour of what a typical OJS journal looks like from your reader's perspective. Remember, OJS is highly customizable, so you will be able to change many elements of the reader's interface. And because OJS is open source software, you can make even more significant changes to how it looks if you have some coding expertise. Let's take a look at the Canadian Journal of Learning and Technology as an example. Here we are on the home page of the journal. They have chosen to place their current articles on the home page, which is a good choice. Alternatively, you could choose to have announcements, images, or a welcome message on the front page instead. As you can see, there are links to register or login in the top right corner of the page. There is top level horizontal navigation bar that contains the most important content access points and a sidebar of more specialized information. The current tab will bring you to the most recently published volume of your journal. As you can see, this page displays the volume and issue information of the publication. The content of this example issue is split into four sections, editorial, book review, notes, and articles. From this table of contents, we can also see titles, authors, and the formats in which the content can be accessed. Clicking on a title of an article brings you to the detail page where you'll see the article's abstract and citation information. By clicking on the formats links, you can also access the article. This journal publishes in PDF and MP3 format. Some journals choose additional formats. Food and Nutrition Research, for example, publishes in PDF, HTML, EPUB, and XML. Some journals have also embedded multimedia into their articles, including audio, video, interactive maps, and more. We'll discuss formats in detail in the Editorial Workflow course. The Archives tab provides access to all previously published volumes of the journal and a brief description of each one. Clicking through on the issue will bring you to that table of contents, which outlines the contents of the issue and provides access to that content. The About tab, when clicked on, brings the reader to a broad About the Journal page. The content of this page is entirely published or created, and it can contain as much or as little information as you'd like. Hovering over the About tab opens a drop-down menu listing other items that may be of interest, including the editorial team, submissions, and contact. The editorial team tab contains as much or as little information as you decide, and it is a space in which you can introduce the members of your editorial team. The submissions page gives general guidelines about making submissions to the journal and is a portal that can be used to make submissions. Contact information contains the address of the journal, information for the principal contact of the editorial staff, and contact information for the journal web instance support person. Finally, there is a search bar which can be used to run keyword searches for content on your website. Clicking on your journal title will bring you back to the splash page. The content in the site navigation menu is something that you will determine for your journal and we'll look at that more in module eight. Nearly everything we've seen on the website today is customizable, including the design through the use of themes. And I'll walk you through that process in the subsequent modules. This example includes a language block that is useful for users to change languages on bilingual journals, a block including information about the journal, social media links, and other links that can be useful for readers, such as the sign up for e-alerts link, the submit a manuscript link, and links to external sites. This concludes our introductory tour of what readers encounter when navigating around an OJS journal website. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again in the next video.